Okay, Sam. So starting from the beginning, could you tell us what is visual anthropology, please? Okay, so uh, the classic definition, which uh, some people might know of visual anthropology is uh, anthropologically studying uh, the visual uh, data or uh, visual information. And also it means visual study of the anthropological. So it's, it's like uh, a vice versa, two ways kind of a process, anthropologically studying the visuals and visual study of the anthropology and uh, of the anthropological information, which basically means say, uh, I, there are different elements of our culture and which, are, which can be seen visually, say we have urban pots, we have say cooler rings, anything that can, is visually seen by our eyes. And uh, so when we study anthropology, we try to understand the culture it comes from the historical background, the tradition associated with it, how it is intertwined or uh, how it, uh, it relates to the environment. So that becomes the anthropological study of the visuals. Um, second, that uh, the visual study of the anthropological would uh, probably be uh, something like have uh, it is almost the same. It is almost similar. It probably means we already have the uh, information, uh, say about a group or an ethnic group, and we are trying to represent it visually. We are say trying to capture it visually, and uh, we are. Uh, so digital ethnography is probably a great way where it combines both the aspects where you study visuals put on different uh, social media platforms and networks and all and uh, uh, you and then there are uh, things wherein uh, people use information to represent the vision like for example infographics so that's uh, probably a more uh, recent latest sort of an example so, uh, so that's that's by going by the standard definition but uh, if you ask me more open about that i think visual can Anthropology is a reflexive science. Uh, it helps you as a researcher or as someone uh, who's in the field to evaluate yourself as a researcher and uh, you know, using a camera or which can be mobile or digital or any which way and you're trying to understand your actions. So uh, you see a group, you see a user, you see something's happening, you, you have some prior knowledge of it and then you record it, you shoot it and uh, then you watch it again and then you understand that uh, where did you stand as a researcher? And uh, did you have any biases? What there were any cognitive dissonance? Were you, uh, did you record the early impressions or surprises? Or just because you wanted to introspect too much, you created that shot where you recorded it in a way that matches your own personal biases. So it becomes a very uh, reflexive science, uh, according to me. And uh, so that's the first point. And, uh, and other thing, uh, visual anthropology, another great thing about it is that uh, we talk about space, so space in the sense of not like just a literal space, when you uh, space in the sense of all the elements or people elements present when you go to uh, uh, an area to document something or go to a group, document a group, so the space that people belong in, the elements, their interactions. So you as a researcher or, or your camera or your equipment or how you represent it visually or how you explain it, it uh, becomes, uh, you, you become like, uh, how do I say, uh, like uh, uh, a pathway, a pathway of uh, transcending or uh, passing on that space to other set of people, people who will be watching your work. Say what seeing the pictures, or say now for example we are uh, doing this interview. So uh, there's there's a, there's an essence of space, maybe not even literally, but uh, and any st the students who would see it, uh, see this probably they will be able to relate to it. They'll be able to relate to the elements that um, have been formed or that we have come across, come up with in this digital space that we are interacting. So uh, it is just a pathway for space to transfer. Absolutely. Well, no, I was going to say my space is like, uh, obviously also chose, right? But it's like yeah. very neutral, very clean, like 
you know, you don't see anything. But in your case, we, we do definitely feel like we are in a, in a place. In, you know, Absolutely. Could you, could you maybe tell us a bit about Yeah, for sure. So it's, all, it's done on purpose. So this was uh, my first day, my last project. So this was on, uh, there's an uh, indigenous community called Bond Tribes. It's one of the largest community in uh, South Asia. It's largest in terms of the spread it has across uh, India and South Asia. And... Uh, uh, so this was my last project and uh, this was the first day and this is a part of a death ceremony. So uh, in most societies in India, most of the laws of modern or contemporary society, which are words such what you use, different slangs are there. So uh, women don't participate in death rituals or death ceremonies at all. And so I had never seen that in my family. But when I went there, this was my first day and, uh, and first day, boom, all thrown into a death ceremony happening and women are participating. So I had, uh, I would call it a cultural shock because mm -hmm. I have to go with the mindset that you can't, uh, that the person having cultural shock eventually leads to ethnocentrism. So you have to, surprise is okay, because surprise makes you curious. And uh, so this is uh, what it was, and this is the first thing that we documented. So, and it is, I think, the uh, yeah, it's the daughter-in-law uh, that uh, sort of it's either the daughter or the daughter-in-law depends on family situation that leads the uh, way. The, uh, that's that that leads to ceremony. So that's how I saw, and I forget it was essential to document this because here again talking about space. Here I'm not just showing the physical space as to the, the village area, the background, I'm also showing, uh, and when I explain it through voiceover in my film, I am talking about the ceremony and there I'm showing that uh, how women are participating and in fact in the entire ceremony in the film, they, they, nobody really cries. So I'm like trying to show there that it is not, a, it is not uh, seen as a time of mourning, a death ceremony, it is seen as a time of uh, celebrations because of their animistic practices. So again, I'm trying to uh, transcend, I am the carrier of this culture, this space, this elements or these people to other side of the world. Other side of the world would mean other people from other cultures, other societies. And uh, like how you said in your interview on YouTube that you don't need to interact to be a part of the community. So maybe someone who sees related culture and they might just say, oh, something like that happens in my village. Something like that I've seen before. And uh, this looks, this particular element looks similar to how it happens in my household. So again, through sense of relatability, there are communities forming. 